So during this section, I want to review pretty much the what, why, and how of the McGraw-Hill Connect uh, service and how it you know, particularly can be integrated within your course site. This also applies in case you are a Blackboard client um, who whose school, you know, whether it be district or organization, licenses our enterprise functionality and you have access to Blackboard at your school, what I'm reviewing today is also applicable to your Blackboard environment um, if and only if your system administrators have enabled the building block on your system. So in case you don't see on your systems what I'm demonstrating today at your school, you might need to speak with your technology coordinator, your Blackboard system administrator to get the building block as it's referred enabled at the system level. Okay, but otherwise, um, I will be using course sites as the demonstration environment. And while uh, we have a limited time today, I did want to make sure that you saw what the students are seeing. So I have a couple of screenshots to show you there. I can't demonstrate that full process, but I think you'll be very pleased with uh, McGraw-Hill Connect's student preview capabilities, uh, as we'll see today. So in order to talk a little bit about the McGraw-Hill Connect, um, some of you gave us some green checks that you already know what that is. Um, so I'm happy if you feel free if you want to add what I'm saying into the, um, into the chat. But McGraw-Hill Connect is, is a web property or a web service that they have uh, built. And the building block that we've established with them enables you to integrate digital content assessments and activities directly into your course site. Uh, McGraw-Hill Connect is known as uh, having a robust library of assessments and assignments, particularly interactive assessments and assignments, to help save you time uh, in order to, you know, t the building a course is one of the most time consuming aspects in online learning. So the, the content that is already prepared by the McGraw-Hill experts and instructional designers is something that you can now bring into your course site and your Blackboard courses. The, what the building block enables for you is a couple of different tools, actually. So the Connect service enables a couple of different aspects. First would be a McGraw-Hill Connect assignments. And those of us familiar with Blackboard, that term assignment in McGraw-Hill actually means a couple of different things. So that could mean uh, assignments where students are submitting things for you, or it could mean interactive practice activities to help reinforce content and concepts. It can be quizzes. It can be full on um, exams and also within a pool type of uh, test. So it's pulling from a, a set of larger pool of questions. So very robust there. There's also Learn Smart, which has been recently added. And this is a way for students to have access to practice activities that um, is adaptive. And that means that it's, it's receiving the information that they're inputting and sending back questions and information based on what the student is inputting. So it's sort of a semantic learning experience. Won't have too much time to demonstrate that today, but uh, definitely explore that when you have a moment on your own. And then interestingly, I think you'll be uh, quite pleased that the McGraw-Hill integration comes with access to uh, Tegrity, which is a lecture capture platform. So if you're looking for ways um, to go ahead and provide audio uh, and a lecture capture into your classrooms, then Integrity is something in the McGraw-Hill building block would be something you could take advantage of. And then there's the McGraw-Hill Connect library, which really is just a uh, collection of all of the tools as well as an e-book version of the textbook that you've uh, have chosen for your course. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about the why. But let me see. I saw a couple of things come in. I see a couple of folks who have mentioned that they're not necessarily teaching. Um, to Amy, that's OK. I'm not sure of what your um, role may be if you're an instructional designer, uh, as well as Megan. If, you know, feel free to stay on and listen in if you would want to pass on the information to any of your colleagues who may be teaching or may be um, you know, a professor or an instructor. And McGraw-Hill is somewhat limited to um, higher ed from its textbooks, but I do understand that some of the uh, some of the textbooks that they do offer are used in the K-12 environment. So uh, it does apply to both. So again, Amy, you're welcome to stay on to listen in case you feel like you have some teachers who might be able to utilize what we're reviewing today. So as I mentioned earlier at the onset of the presentation, 
The McGraw-Hill Connect capability is going to enable us to create one learning landscape. Now, with just Blackboard alone and course sites alone, it's very important from an, a course design perspective to have an environment that's set up so for student success. And that means that the menu is uh, evident and students can easily find the information that they need, both from a content perspective as well as information on how to complete assessments and assignments and then um, links to be able to complete those activities. As well as for you, um, the same, you would want an environment that is set up uh, for success for you to be able to access information easily and readily to review that student work. So what we want to make sure it doesn't happen is students getting lost in that process. And if we begin to use the uh, online textbook supplements like McGraw-Hill Connect, prior to the building block, students were going into a couple of different environments, uh, both possibly within Blackboard, then logging into McGraw-Hill Connect separately. So getting a bit lost and a bit um, encumbered in too many web spaces. So this could lead to a good amount of disengagement on the students. So as Blackboard and McGraw-Hill partnered, they really thought through the process of how to get increased engagement and decrease that confusion um, on both the student and the teacher's side. So here we just have a what if we could go ahead and save you some more time. And if you had more time to focus on the interactions with your students rather than um, kind of monitoring and pulling information from two environments into one. And what if you could have access to the interactive and digital learning content in just two clicks? Okay, so I won't read through all of these, but the what ifs here, imagine yourself having a good amount of time, having a more efficient grading process, saving um, a lot of time going between environments from the publisher and Blackboard and course sites, and having a single login to be able to access all that information. So this is what the McGraw-Hill Connect is going to enable you and your students to be able to do. So David, I see your question at the moment. The partnership uh, that I'm going to be discussing today is, is a building block that was built specifically for Blackboard and course sites. Uh, I'm not too sure about Moodle's partnership with McGraw-Hill at this point. I, I know that Moodle has begun to partner with some publishers and really similar capabilities, but I don't think it is available at this time. And Barbara, I see your question. Uh, would this be an alternative to loading a course cartridge from a publisher? That's a great question. I actually thought about including that information here in the presentation. Um, so it is different. Um, and a course cartridge is something that publishers have been utilizing for quite some time. And in essence, for everyone on the session today, a cartridge is uh, where a textbook uh, publisher like McGraw-Hill would create at a Blackboard course supplement. And that would really be a course that could be imported into your current Blackboard environment. And it's really a one-time copy. Um, and you have the ability to modify that information. Um, and all the tests and such come over. But it's not really uh, able to be updated as easily by having the content reside with McGraw-Hill. So the Connect is actually going to pair the McGraw-Hill Connect environment as well as the Blackboard and course size environment together seamlessly so that information is the most up-to-date. Um, and you also have the ability to um, take advantage of some of the latest functionality like I described with integrity lecture capture um, and the, uh, the other capabilities that we'll talk about like the create, the customized, customized, customizable textbook capability. So Barbara, let me know if that helps answer your question. And David, as well, let me know if that helps. So as I do, I think you all probably would like things to be pretty easy. And I think you'll find that getting set up with the McGraw-Hill Connect building block and the capabilities will be easy as one, two, three. Sounds kind of um, too good to be true. But as I put here today, and I'll demonstrate shortly, we have just the uh, necessity to register for your McGraw-Hill Connect account. And this is typically uh, happens once you either purchase a textbook or you're looking for a textbook from an evaluation standpoint. I've done the same uh, when I was, and I am teaching a class, but I've done the same in that process. Then you would want to pair course sites with that Connect section and then begin adding the engaging content activities and assessments. Okay. So 
At this point, I want to launch my web browser and share with you the process of how to follow those steps. What we see here is just a launching pad that we'll see within the course um, once I get there. So give me a moment to share my browser, and I'll do another check to make sure you're seeing what we're supposed to see. Okay, so this is somewhat like a cooking show. We're going to be skipping some steps today and have some magic cakes come out of the oven. But what I wanted to make sure uh, that you're seeing now is the course sites screen uh, where I'm already logged in. So I have a course sites account as well. I've logged into course sites and I'm going to be accessing one of the courses through the My Courses uh, environment. So just make sure I have a, a verbal or a green check that you can all see that information. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is go into, I've established a course, Communication in the Workplace with Computers. And that's actually the course um, that I teach. And here it's set up. It's not filled much with content. I don't teach myself on course sites. It's within a separate um, school's environment. But I figured I'd use that to demonstrate today. So we have a typical Blackboard course. Once you have the McGraw-Hill building block enabled on your system, if you're using another Blackboard system at a school or here on course sites, you're going to come into your tools area here on the menu. Um, if you've used one of our pre-built structures, it's either more tools or additional tools. Um, if you do not have a tools link on your menu, you can go ahead and create an extra tool link to uh, the tools area in order to access. Or you can just create a link on the menu for yourself, uh, keep it unavailable to students to the McGraw-Hill Higher Education area. So a couple of different ways to establish access uh, to the tool set that we'll be exploring today. So I'm going to scroll down and come to the McGraw-Hill Higher Education area. And the step that we're skipping today is the creation of the McGraw-Hill Connect account. Again, this typically requires that you're adopting a McGraw-Hill textbook or in the evaluation of a textbook. Once you have that account set up and worked with McGraw-Hill to get that set up, you can then pair your section um, with your course site with your McGraw-Hill Connect section as it's referred to here. So when I click this, which is our next step in the process, this is going to be launching the McGraw-Hill Connect service. You are indeed leaving course sites, but as you can see, it's a pretty seamless process where it comes up in the same screen. And I have a choice now for the, whether to pair a new co Connect course, and this depends on whether you've set a, um, a section up or a course up in Connect already, which I will do today, or you can set up a brand new one. So it really just depends on where you are in that process and how you've explored Connect previously. Uh, if you just go ahead and do a new one, uh, it would give you a list similar to what you'll see today here in my project list to choose from. So I'm going to go ahead and choose select an existing one, and I've set up a business communication in the workplace. Again, this is pretty much dependent on texts. So once I go ahead and select the course, I have already named it in preparation for the spring, or even at this step. This is what I really like about the McGraw-Hill Connect property. They do a little of anticipation uh, of, your, of your thinking. So you might have gone down this path and decided, hey, at this point I want to add a new section. But you know, so you can click that here. But I'm going to choose the uh, paired section that we already have. And then, well, let me go ahead and add a new section. Uh, I did forget that you can only pair one uh, course with one section. And as I was testing this out on our other environment, um, I go ahead, went ahead and created that other section. There are no limits to uh, the number of sections that you can have on Connect, so don't worry about that. Okay, so at this stage too, and the, one of the other things I like about Connect is you're presented with a good amount of support uh, during the process. So I can go ahead and take a look at more information to be reminded about what we're covering today. I can grab some student registration tools, which we'll discuss briefly. 
and I can go ahead and watch a video. So a couple of different formats. I'm going to go ahead and go to my Connect section in order to explore and begin to import some of the assignments and interactive sessions. Just to quickly look at what we have here from a Connect standpoint. We have the home, which allows us to add some assessments. And then we have a library. And this library is something that I think is very useful. Um, it gives me access to all of the abilities, such as my assignments and uh, ebook. I just wanted to quickly show you the ebook version. So here, just look, and the students would have access to this as well once they establish their Connect account. It's by chapter. I can go ahead and search and take a look at what's here. And it's also, as we saw, as you might have seen quickly, under the chapter opener, we have learning objectives that are listed at the front. And I can even click on those and be taken to the information that's pertinent directly to those learning objectives. Okay, or I can search for particular um, phrases or words that I wanted to remember that I read or come back to, both as the instructor or the student. Okay. And as you begin to build out your Connect section with resources, you'll see that as you, uh, your lectures from Tegrity, your assignments, as I'll show you how to, to build, would have access all in one place. So I really like that. And then your reports, in particular, are good to come back when you have some student activity. Uh, so you have the access here, both in Connect, and as we, uh, I'll describe, you have uh, the information coming into your Blackboard Grade Center as well. OK, so I'm going to come back to the Home tab. And I don't have any assignments yet. So I want to go ahead and add an assignment. Now, just as, a, as I've used the, the Connect property myself, I've, I've had to learn a couple of shortcuts. You'll, you'll probably find your own way. But again, those of us familiar with Blackboard terminology as an assignment, it can be something where students um, attach a file. But this is really just uh, it does not going to give us access to McGraw-Hill's robust content activities and assessments. So what I want to do is create a new question from a question bank, or a new assignment from a question bank. And this is going to be where I can find some case studies. I can find some drag and drop activities. And I'm going to at first go ahead and just create a practice activity for students. And it's a pretty good step-by-step -step process here once we get into Connect. It's going to take me to the question sets next. I'm going to go ahead and take the interactives that are associated with chapter one. Okay, you see there's a quiz and a test bank as well. I'm going to use the interactives as students to be able to practice and reinforce what they're learning in the text. Okay, so here we're presented with the list. I can go ahead and sort depending on the length of that. I can use these to go ahead and sort by learning objective, by topic, difficulty, uh, Bloom's taxonomy, okay, and the AASB standards as well. So I'm just going to go ahead. I liked them all, but I'm going to just show you what one of these looks like. And this is what I think, as I mentioned earlier, from a preview standpoint, what I love about this uh, service. So you can go ahead and click on a particular question. and give it a second to, uh, to load here. So once that loads, this question is actually a series of activities. So it gives them instructions to start. And then once the student were to proceed to start the activity, um, they get a use case that they get to read through, and then some example and some questions to answer. And then they submit that. And then there's also some concept checks that they can list through. Um, some of the other questions that I chose, there's a video case. Um, if I can go back to that question, I believe that's number five. Um, you'll see as, as the video loads, I get certain points within the video here. The blue dots indicate where they would be prompted to answer questions. So they're not just watching it all the way through. They're actually getting prompted to answer questions um, as they go throughout, uh, which is 
and that's kind of loud, so I'll go ahead and just show you there as we get to that certain section, the students are asked to be able to immediately provide a feedback based on how they're grasping the video that's being watched. And then once they would submit, they'd have a comparison of their answers versus what the correct answers were. And all of these activities that you um, add into not only the Connect section, but your course sites, um, you get to go ahead and uh, have the scores also get in, go into your Course Sites Grade Center. So you can either come into your Connect environment or you can go into the Course Sites Grade Center to be tracking these activities. Okay, so I'm going to add all of these questions as individual questions. And now, once I get that confirmation, we want to go into and set our policies. And you have the option of setting these up as, you know, a different types of homework, practice, quiz, or exam. This is a practice. At times, the screen will refresh. Some of the settings might change based on what we've chosen. Even if it is practice, I might scramble it for them because I want to give them some unlimited attempts um, to help, again, reinforce. Do I want them to start fresh or be able to start off where they left when they, if they've left to the assignment? So I'm going to have them start fresh. And you'll see as I scroll down a couple of good options here, such as answer tolerance options and then availability. Since this is practice, I'm going to leave it open. But the one thing that I really like, if we do set a due date, for instance, if I set next Friday, and this is available on all types of activities, I can reduce the amount of credit they receive based on an hour or day. And this actually coincides with a policy that I have where I teach as well. So I think, again, they've really thought through some of the um, actual instructional scenarios of what's happening um, with us. Okay. So then I get just some confirmation screens. I can always go back and um, review or save and exit if I didn't want to deploy. But here I'm going to go ahead and deploy into Blackboard. And once I click Assign, I take and then back into my course site where I began. and. Because I, I began in my tools area, it's now allowing me to choose where in my course I want this to go. And I'll show you quickly, too, once we get there, there's another launching point that you can use. So I'm going to use the course map to choose my chapter one folder. And then in the case that there are a series of activities, this is sort of one assignment. Uh, we'll, you know, I'll just keep this as yes. It won't create a folder for me. but. Um, you can go ahead and make sure that it does or does not create a folder, and then choose the scoring mechanism. Okay, so I'm now taken into that area where I've launched the practice uh, quiz, and pretty much as I turn the editing tools off, this is what the students would see within the course, and then the students could go ahead and launch this particular practice. And it's going to go ahead and look similar to what I had previewed based on uh, when we were in the Connect itself. Okay. So again, as I showed you, I went into the tools area to launch the McGraw-Hill um, Connect. But as you're building the course, as you're creating the structure as I had here, I have a chapter one folder, I have a chapter two folder. Let's say I wanted to present now a quiz in this environment. Under Create Assessment, I have McGraw-Hill Assignment. And if I select that, you'll see that this will take me back into a list of all of the assignments that I've created. And I can reissue a, a similar assignment. Or I can go ahead and create a new one. And this launches me back into that workflow back into the Connect property, and then back into the assignment creation from within their question banks and activities. Okay. So just a few uh, more things on this, and then we definitely need to proceed forward. Um, I also wanted to show you, so once I've launched this activity, I mentioned that you can either look for the results in the Connect property or in your Grade Center the student scores from their um, interaction with that practice activity will come in. I don't have anybody enrolled right now, but you can see that this heading here would give me these scores for the student uh, work in that regard. 
Okay. So I'm going to return uh, to the slide deck just uh, for a few moments, see if there's any questions that came in as we were demonstrating that part of the uh, environment and then move on to talk a little bit about SimNet and then the McGraw-Hill Create capability. Okay, so let me just scroll up a little bit. So Amy, you mentioned how well does this work with uh, the Blackboard 9.0 Service Pack 7. We don't plan to upgrade until summer of 2012. So at present, uh, this is a building block that is only available for 9.1 Service Packs 4 and beyond. Um, so I guess what that means is you could uh, go ahead and practice on course sites uh, this coming spring until your school upgrades this summer. We currently are running 9.1 Service Pack 7 and we'll be planning to upgrade to the next Service Pack early next year. So we, as I've demonstrated today, you have this capability that you can utilize on core sites. And then Judy, you ask how, how close is this to the procedure for the real Blackboard? Very similar. So all the steps that I walked through, um, all the same, all the areas that you're going to be launching, your uh, access to the assignments and assessments to the uh, connect property will be the same. Really the difference for right now is the look and feel of course sites since we have some, some themes on there that are not yet in learn. But otherwise all the workflows and all the process steps uh, that I've highlighted work uh, pretty similarly. And I I'll mention this later, but we will send to you an instructor guide so you'll see the steps that I've done today. Um, and the screenshots taken there are actually Blackboard environments. Okay, some of us are leaving, so I appreciate the um, the input. If you guys do have to leave, just make sure that you are sending Sarah your email so we can return uh, that that gift card to you. Ah, so Barbara Wilkins, um, I believe that would be the case until you're able to upgrade. So this it was built um, for 9.1, um, and I'll double check on that just to make sure, but I believe that it is relatable to uh, 9.1 and Service Pack 4. Oh, OK. I Thank you, Katie. appreciate that information. Um, so it looks like there might be versions out there. And, and I can definitely, in a follow-up email, make sure we get the correct version information for what you would need for, for the versions that you're on. And then Barbara Pittman, I assume McGraw-Hill has an easy to find library of books that work with Connect. Um, you know, interestingly, I haven't tried it the other way around to look at their general site to see if they have a Connect sort of icon with their courses, but you're welcome to use course sites to look through. Um, you know, just from that perspective to look through the list of courses or the list of books, it's pretty much separated by subject and then you'll get a, a list of text that you can run through. Okay. And as, as um, yeah, Barbara, as you mentioned, as the building block continues, we are developing new and different aspects to it. Um, so earlier versions may not necessarily have everything uh, that I'm demonstrating today. So let's just quickly take a look at and talk a bit about the students before we move on, because uh, it's important that uh, they get involved as well. So similar to you, the students would be required to register for a Connect account. Um, a pretty simple process. If they've already used a textbook, perhaps with another course, and they've used Connect with another uh, instructor, they would be remembered in the system and be able to easily uh, utilize that account, or they could start a new. Um, they are also able to start a free trial, um, similar to you with an evaluation of a textbook. If they're not sure, if they're not sure what their um, path in the course is going to be, they can start in that capacity as well. Okay. Um, and then I, we did talk a little bit about um, how it would look. I just wanted to back up quickly here. You know, again, all the items are pretty much going to look like Blackboard items, except new icons are being provided for the variety of assignments and assessments that are being provided by McGraw-Hill. 
Okay, but for them, it's all in one place. And while new windows or uh, the new sort of environment will launch, they don't have to go somewhere else in order to interact with the activities that you're assigning to them. And it's hopefully going to save you a lot more time for writing instructions and providing them uh, with that type of information. OK, so SimNet is actually a recent addition to the latest version of the building block. And this is uh, a new, uh, it's not that necessarily new to McGraw-Hill, but this is an area that's focusing mostly on productivity tools such as Microsoft uh, Office. And so what, what uh, McGraw-Hill SimNet can offer us, I'm going to follow a similar what, why, and how. Uh, I, there's not enough time to go through um, all the steps, as I mentioned, in, in, in reality, as I did with the Connect property today. But the uh, SimNet would act very similar. So it just requires a Connect account. You know, and once we have that established, what it offers us is access to a similar web property that is providing to us a, a simulation environment, again, particularly for Microsoft Office tools. And it, it gives the ability for students to have uh, not only instructional text, graphics, and interactivity to show them the skills that we're trying to impart, but animations with audio narration. Uh, in order to watch in a different mode and grasp the information and then the ability to try. And the SimNet grader, the Sim grader as it's referred, another bullet here could be you know, to let them uh, demonstrate, to let them show you that they've grasped and are able to uh, demonstrate the skill that we're looking to impart. And this is something that I wish I could convince my school to use as I teach the students Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. And, uh, I'm hoping to convince them to try to move to this environment. A little bit about the why. So like learning a language, learning software is a bit necessary to have the students immersed into that program. And again, the, the SimNet offers a virtual Microsoft environment. There's nothing to install. Uh, it's very simple to use. and it's um, applicable with uh, the Firefox and Internet Explorer browsers to date. Uh, I have to do a bit more exploration myself on the Safari, but as I was um, reviewing information once again, it mentioned compatibility with Internet Explorer and Firefox. But I really appreciate the multimedia approach that it takes, you know, with not only giving them access to information to review and pictures to look at, but with the audio narration uh, for demonstrations to watch, and then really that immersive act practice activities to be able to utilize a simulated environment. So it's lessening a little um, fear on their part, hopefully getting them more confident in their skills, and that as we, some of us are producing next generation workforce members, being able to really participate successfully uh, in that. And then one of the great benefits of the SimNet is it provides lifelong learning and self-study. So beyond the courses that we are providing, the students would have access after the class to continue their practice. Um, within the topic that we've chosen to, to connect them with, but they have ability to continue practicing that, knowing you know, they might not use all the tools in Word, let's say, for um, in their first year. Uh, it might be a year until they get employed, so they need a refresher on how to do that. It offers a good environment uh, for that type of up update. So I'll stop there before I, I uh, talk about the couple steps of the how. I see, Sabita, you have your hand up. Did you want to go ahead and, and talk, or did you want to put that in the, the chat? Uh, OK. All right, so I see your question here. Can I deploy the chapter assignments simultaneously to different sections for the same course? Um, Yes. So it, as you saw as I stepped through um, and we're back on the connect, I would assume um, might even apply to SimNet here. So your question, uh, Sabita, one, one, one connect section or connect course is able to be paired with one Blackboard course or course site, um, although your assignments and assessments end up being able to be seen. And they're associated more with your account. Um, so you can usually see those across different sections. So you can definitely um, assign them across different sections.
Okay. And the SimNet, again, um, I'm not going to be able to launch into uh, the interactive demo of this, but basically you would register for your McGraw-Hill account, you would pair your course site as I, as I showed you earlier, and then um, begin using the SimNet to set up similar types of activities and assignments for the students. And the student registration would also be similar. Um, at present, there is a, is a what's known as a SimNet URL. So some schools license this uh, in total and uh, are provided with a URL if you're just an individual using this on course sites. Um, we're looking at setting up a course sites URL, but it may be that it will be a, a short while before that's established. Uh, and I believe that the uh, McGraw-Hill folks could set you up with a demo environment just until that, that is able to happen. So the next topic then before we close today, I want to talk about the McGraw-Hill Create capability. Um, and similar, go ahead and talk about the what, why, and how. Okay, so the, the McGraw-Hill Create capability is, is providing us with the ability to create our own course materials out of the, the textbooks that they create, but also out of articles um, such as Harvard Business Review, out of uh, business law cases, out of readings, and even um, items that we could upload ourselves. So this is really a web service that's enabling us to cobble together um, knowing that we might not use all of the chapters within a particular textbook, eliminate some of those chapters, add on some others, and create um, a better customized reading and uh, course material uh, package for our students. And it might actually in, uh, end up being a little less expensive then from the student's perspective because they can either have an ebook, which would be much less, or they can print it out in black and white or in color. Uh, so you could provide the ability for students to have a less expensive text rather than buying one entire textbook that they're only using half of. And here, I, you know, in terms of the why, I think a good number of us who are teaching feel, um, again, in that regard, we may not use an entire textbook. Some of us want a bit more flexibility on how to create our course readings and our packages um, and just really have an easy way to pull that all together rather than having to either stand at the copy or, or pull together articles and such in a PDF document depending on what we have access to. Okay, so I'm going to launch into a similar process. Um, with the Connect capability, we're going to have to register for a Connect account, and then we would launch the Create service to be able to collect and arrange our readings and create our text. So let me go ahead and share my screen and show you how that's done. I see a couple of questions that come in, but I want to make sure we get through um, the material, and I'll address those too as we uh, come back to the presentation. So I can launch the textbook um, in a particular area and kind of launch that process in, a, in one of our content areas using the assigned textbook link here, okay, with the McGraw-Hill Create, or come back into the tools area, which I had mentioned earlier and launch it from there as well. So once we're in the higher education kind of dashboard, as I call it here, I can launch and go to, to create my textbooks here. So in either way, it's going to take us to the create environment. Okay, similar to the connect capability, we'll have a lot of information that we can look at now. I have a good amount of further training materials that I can review. or just as today, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to pull these together. And they've set it up in a way that really gives us three easy steps, which is to find our content, arrange, and then personalize it or finalize. Okay, so by finding the content, so for instance, if I type in my course topic,
Okay, I can take a look at the texts that come as part of my search. Okay, so just to take a quick one, I like the business communications connecting in a digital world. That's sort of the direction of the course that I'm leading. It's now pulling that information um, and then gives us this table of contents to review. Okay, so I can go ahead and you can see this little add button. So the add is giving me the ability to add just this particular section or maybe I want to add the introduction. Um, and I've done that already to a project. So if I'm looking through here, maybe um, you know I want to focus about on cross-cultural communication. What that's going to do is bring up any current projects or I can create a whole new project. And a project really is, you can think of it as related to your course. So I'm going to add that to my current project. And now all of these have been added. And again, this is just this section of this textbook. As we go through, you can see the text is pretty much like what we might have physically, but now it's in an ebook format. Okay. I can also um, not only add the, the textbook, but I have also received article research results based on what I've typed in here. Okay, so I get, you can, like you see the Harvard, Harvard Business Publishing results, MIT. Okay, a good number of results. I can filter that also by some of the um, filters that we hear on the left, basically copyright year, language, format type. I get cases that I can pull in, other types of reading. So definitely on your own time, please review all of these results related to your um, readings and then even the media come in uh, to play. And then uploads would be some big content that you could create yourself. And I'm hoping that you can see at the bottom of the screen as you begin to compile your information, you have the number of pages that you're including as well as the estimated price. As you can see, I flip through the ebook print or color, okay, that then it has um, reduces the amount of money based on what I'm choosing or increases if I want to go full color or black and white. Okay, and then the range area, this is where as you're pulling together your information, you might want to cr create uh, certain sections. So I created this um, additional article section, you know, I can move these areas where I want them to go, okay, and just expand and contract as our table of contents uh, begins to expand. So all of these titles or tools up here are enabling us to create a table of contents with indenting and outdenting, adding a divider, showing attributions, removing them if we change our mind, or printing an example to see what the students uh, would be able to see. And once we have all the table of con that table of contents arranged, we can then personalize and finalize choosing a particular cover. Uh, right now, the title of the course is just a sample. Entering your course information, more information about yourself, and then your school information. What types of formats? So we had chosen just again to give you um, a decision point about what final format you want that to be in, and then you can order a review or review copy. And this is what I like. It's similar to an evaluation copy. So you can go ahead and look at it before you decide to publish this to your students. Once you do go ahead and order that copy, uh, you'll get an email with the ability to uh, finalize. And then as you'll see, once I come back into my project area, I can go ahead and approve that project and then be able to have the students purchase this even from within my course. So as I go through that process, if I've approved this, I can inc incorporate this link into my uh, course and then the students would be launched directly into a McGraw-Hill purchasing vehicle. And this, for those of us who are licensing Blackboard Learn, this is something that the administrators can decide to do or not, again, depending on some of the, the, uh, the textbook um, agreements on campus. Okay, but within course sites, I've enabled that capability. 
Okay, so I'm going to come back to our presentation. Now that you've seen how to go ahead and start a course site customized create a customized textbook with McGraw Hill Create. Okay, and if you have to leave us, I know we're coming up at the top of the hour. I wanted to make sure that if for further information that you can visit uh, www.blackboard.com slash McGraw dash Hill. Uh, what we'll be doing also is sending to each of you who have attended a uh, link to the instructor guide as well as the student guide so you can see how uh, the information I presented today uh, goes a bit further and you'll have that on paper or a PDF to be able to have access to as well.